Hey everybody, Danny Rowdy. Thank you for clicking on this video. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, watching. Thank you, I sincerely appreciate it. Today's video, we're gonna talk about how to increase blood flow. And this is kind of a part two of two weeks ago, I did a video on the classic horseshoe shape of baldness. And I talked about how that's related to low systemic energy, decreased blood flow, increased mast cell infiltration and activation and then uh, what's inside those mast cells, so an accumulation of the polyunsaturated fats causing inflammation, uh, fibrosis, edema, uh, mucopolysaccharides, etc. So baldness is obviously a very complex problem and a lot of people have kind of latched onto the, the blood flow idea and I think that is historically been treated with things like massage and people talk about derma rolling and so if you're not familiar with that, it's where you have a little rolling device with uh, like pins in it and you roll it on your scalp. So you're damaging your scalp in order, the idea is in order to regenerate it. And so there are like lots of methods that have been used for a really long time. And if you read uh, uh, the, the Social History of Baldness, I forget the book, I'll link it uh, over my face right now. But if you read that book, they talk about baldness and how it, it was clearly a mechanical problem they were trying all these different kinds of things to stimulate the scalp and so that idea that the something's wrong with the scalp or that you need to do manipulate it somehow to increase the blood flow to increase hair growth that is as old as baldness itself so uh, my attempt with this video is to shift the conversation away from those things i'm not even saying they don't work or they're not helpful like getting a scalp massage might be really relaxing and really uh, help reduce stress or, or something like that. And I don't doubt anybody's experiences if they think they helped. I'm not doubting that. I'm just saying, I think the conversation needs to shift or change because I think looking at the problem, like some, like some mechanical problem is really not that helpful. So with this video, I intend to explain how carbon dioxide from efficient mitochondrial respiration is really, I think, the key to enhancing any kind of uh, blood flow. And so uh, we're gonna talk about that. And before we get super into it, I just wanted to go over a few highlights of some of the previous videos. So if you're new to this, uh, some of the points I try to make are that the current therapies have failed. So finasteride and minoxidil, then baldness, it's not a vanity problem, it's actually a marker of premature aging or a major landmark in aging like menopause. And it's, uh, it's been a use, used as a marker for metabolic syndrome, hypertension, which I think is a part of metabolic syndrome, heart disease, and aggressive, <clears throat> aggressive prostate cancer. So those are all things to consider. And then in Organizing the Panic, I tried to lay out a basic view of a non-genetic view of biology. And so that doesn't mean inheritance doesn't exist or that two people, their physiological states can't be inherited in the children they have, but it, 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 takes, it takes the burden off the genes as being responsible for every aspect of the person. And the Human Genome Project is a very clear example that the whole genetic view of biology is a complete and total failure and it's wrong. <laughs> but that will be another video. And then the final thing is how important the thyroid is for ameliorating male pattern baldness. So, and I did an entire video on that that I'll link somewhere up here. So anyways, uh, glucose in cells is being converted to pyruvate. Pyruvate is being uh, decarboxylated into acetyl-CoA, CoA, releasing carbon dioxide. Then the acetyl-CoA is going into the Krebs or citric acid cycle, producing water, ATP, and carbon dioxide. Really simplistic, I know it's much more complicated, but that is like the basic view of mitochondrial respiration and the production of carbon dioxide. So you have to metabolize glucose efficiently in order to produce carbon dioxide. And the reason why that is important is uh, hemoglobin carries oxygen in the blood and you need a sufficient amount of carbon dioxide via the Bohr effect to release the oxygen from the hemoglobin. So the cells, tissues, and organs, the hair follicle is a mini organ, can absorb the oxygen and produce their energy and maintain their structure and all their, fulfill all their duties they need. So I think 
1958, Montagna said that uh, a hair follicle needs two basic things. It needs uh, like energy substrate like glucose or pyruvate or fructose, and it needs oxygen. So if you just think of extremely basic way and uh, lots of things are happening in baldness to inhibit that energy metabolism. And so just to kind of prove this point, in 2007 they say carbon dioxide facilitates oxygen delivery to the tissues by changing the affinity of oxygen to hemoglobin and increases cerebral blood flow by effects of arterial blood pressure and on cerebral vessels. Recent clinical studies show improved brain oxygenation when hypoxia is combined with hypercapnia, which is uh, lots of carbon dioxide. Anti-inflammatory and protective against organ injury properties of CO2 may have therapeutic importance. So just to tag on to that, azetazolamide, a drug that inhibits the breakdown of carbon dioxide through uh, inhibiting the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, that has been used to treat male pattern baldness. I don't, I haven't heard much talk of it. I'm still looking for additional information on it. But uh, just knowing that, it's kind of a proof of concept that this isn't just complete total theory and it has been applied that uh, something like azetazolamide had, would be used for baldness. And so another aspect of the, the benefits of carbon dioxide is it restrains mast cell activation accumulation uh, and, and that's really important because I think that's a huge, I made the point in the horseshoe shape baldness video that that was actually defining the shape of baldness and that mast cells were accumulating and then being activated and carbon dioxide restrains that. So according to a 2011 paper, they say results from this study provide the first evidence of a unique regulatory mechanism by which CO2 inhibits mast cell degranulation and histamine release by repressing stimulated increases in intracellular calcium. Thus, our data provide a plausible explanation for the reported therapeutic benefit of non-inhaled intra intranasal delivery of 100% uh, CO2 to treat allergenic rhinitis. And of course, that uh, intracellular calcium entering the cell is like one of the first events that happens in stress. And it's one of the things that turns on nitric oxide, which I'll try to do an entire video on, I'm still learning about it, but that seems to be pretty central in baldness as well. So the final thing I wanted to talk about with carbon dioxide is it, that it's an antioxidant and that, uh, I forget what year this was, but they said balding hair follicles appear to be less able to handle oxidative stress and there may be a role for oxidative stress in the pathogenesis of male pattern baldness. And so uh, the hair follicle has, like according to those references, experiences oxidative stress. And the basic definition, or I think the understanding of oxidative stress is to the failure to oxidize, oxidize glucose. And that creates uh, like free electrons or, and oxygen doesn't get disposed of, creating reactive oxygen species, and then leading to things like lipid peroxidation. So it's like a bad chain of events and these free electrons are causing all kinds of damage and antioxidants like vitamin A or vitamin D or vitamin K can be thought of as uh, in the Gilbert Ling sense of electron withdrawing agents and so they pull electrons through the cell and that can have a major therapeutic effect when oxidative stress is occurring damaging the structure of the tissue. And so I think that is clearly happening in baldness and there was another, I wrote about it in Recharging the Mosaic Cycle, but one of the major key pieces of evidence, uh, I didn't write it down here, but I think they said that glut glutathione disulfide or GSSG needs to be recycled back to GSG or glutathione in order to protect the hair follicle. And that is especially important for a highly proliferative tissue like the hair follicle to have protection against uh, oxidative damage, which is more likely because it depends less on mitochondrial respiration. And uh, they said that the balding hair follicle, I'm pretty sure it had a higher level of GSSG, making it, uh, suggesting that it was experiencing lots of stress and couldn't recycle the GSSG back to GSG uh, because it didn't have enough NADPH, th because it didn't have enough G6PDH, an enzyme, that was inhibited in baldness. And so if you're, that sounds totally confusing, I'm sure it is, check out the, the recharging the mosaic cycle because I did my best to do a write up on that. So that's all I really have to say about that. Obviously practical application, I think getting the thyroid checked and not taking your doctor's word for it. Like if they say, 
things are normal. Like what is normal? Like it's just a number on a piece of paper. I think it's good to uh, get a second opinion sometimes or consult research where they find that a normal TSH is associated with uh, severe heart disease and things like that. So normal from a physician is almost the most meaningless term. And also uh, checking things like the cholesterol, which tends to have an inverse relationship with the thyroid. And I think even uh, they found higher cholesterol levels in people with male pattern baldness, both sexes, uh, male and female. And uh, also checking the prolactin level, you could check the carbon dioxide, you could check the parathyroid hormone that decreases the oxygen uh, consumption and production of carbon dioxide. And things like salt, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, uh, all these things can have an influential effect. So I think people laugh when I say that a good diet is important for things like hair loss and they think, oh, yeah, I need some insane, powerful pharmaceutical and I don't really think that's the answer. But I do, th I am an advocate of thyroid hormone, so I, I think it's a supplement because in the 1980s, I think that's when the FDA made selling the gland illegal. And so if you and I were having this conversation a few decades ago, we might eat thyroid in our food. And so uh, sometimes people have really strong uh, opinions about not taking any kind of pills, but it, it, I would always argue that it's kind of like eating liver or oysters and it's just like a supplemental food. So for what it's worth, not that I'm really against taking uh, other things like ciproheptadine or, or whatever. I'll leave it right there, but I really think it's important to shift the conversation and kind of grow the conversation up and think about, start thinking about physiology and the environment and things that affect that and why the, the hair follicle will be degrading and not uh, getting enough oxygen and having its energy metabolism inhibited, which there's ample evidence for. And then considering my, thyroid as mitochondrial hair medicine, I think that's important and also considering that things in your environment are uh, working against your energy metabolism so it's not just like one thing like you take a thyroid pill and everything's okay and there are lots of factors but uh, I think they can be figured out and I think it's extremely possible to do and it's not that overly complicated once you kind of dig in and make some notes or get some evidence of lab tests and things like that. So guys, again, thank you so much. Sincerely appreciate it. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Uh, it, it means a lot to me and it, it makes these videos fun to do. So again, I sincerely appreciate it. Check out the Patreon. That's how I fund all of my work. And I just recently changed some things around. So I might want to check that out if you're interested at all. And thanks again. I'll talk to you guys soon and take care.